Hey everybody, before we get into today's episode, I want to take a minute to introduce our latest service called Crowd Insight by Gadgetflow. It's an awesome tool we made to help you get honest feedback for your upcoming crowdfunding project. Some of the big results we've seen include increased conversion rate, finding out why your project isn't performing well, and getting feedback you need from potential backers. So please head over to gadgetflow.com slash crowd insight to check it out today. You can also find a link in this week's show notes. Now let's get into the episode. Hello world, this is the Gadget Flow Podcast, the show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to chat with Will Ford of LaunchBoom, and Will is one of the most successful crowdfunding experts in the world. He has had multiple crowdfunding campaigns raise over a million dollars for his clients on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and his business just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So we were so excited to get his knowledge on crowdfunding and everything related to it. So please, without further ado, here's my interview with Will from LaunchBoom. I am here with Will from LaunchBoom. Will, how are you doing coming from sunny California? Alex, I am doing great today. It has been an awesome month. A lot of exciting things have happened throughout the year, and i um, just really excited to be on the show with you today. Absolutely, man. We are super stoked to have you on. We're excited to kind of dive into your expertise when it comes to crowdfunding and all that stuff. But um, before we get into the nitty gritty of what exactly you guys do, I just want to get into your background a little bit. So what I always like asking this question, but what got you into crowdfunding? What was the thing that made you uh, really jump into the deep end of crowdfunding in the first place? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, I am what they call a serial entrepreneur. I have built three companies from the ground up and I've had three successful exits and I was primarily attracted to crowdfunding in general because it's just a much safer way to validate any new consumer product. It really Mm. is. And um, before crowdfunding, you know, I was the guy taking all the financial risk. I was the guy coming up with the real clever, creative uh, product launch strategy Um, I was a guy who had to figure out manufacturing and tooling and, you know, I'd have to also put down a great deal of capital to get that first inventory run through before I'd even be able to go to market. Right. So if I was Alex, there was a good chance that I was upside down and I'd be out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And so the reason I really love crowdfunding is because where else can you take a prototype Where else can you introduce it to tens of millions of people in a global marketplace, not just the U.S., but the world, pre-sell thousands of units, collect all the money up front, and then have three to six months to manufacture and deliver now that you know how many units, how much volume to place. Hmm. It's It's just a better model in general. Yeah, absolutely, man. When you put it that way, it sounds pretty darn good. <laughs> so, but I mean, it also comes with its challenges, you know, and I and I think that's something that maybe isn't talked about quite as much, but I'm curious, you know, wh- when did you start LaunchBoom? How, how did LaunchBoom come about? Yeah, so before LaunchBoom, I was launching my own consumer products on Kickstarter, on Indigo, and really what I was doing at the time, um, I was, you know, very much experienced with Facebook, Instagram advertising, and it's primarily because of my last business. I had a company before LaunchBoom called PetBox, and we would ship out tens of thousands of boxes all over the United States to pet lovers. We'd send them boxes of toys and treats, um, all sorts of pet products, and I was acquiring most of my new members through digital marketing, primarily Mm. Facebook through Instagram. So part of my early crowdfunding experience, um, I was leveraging the same type of system where I would pre-launch before I would actually turn on the campaign. And all that means is I would actually build a hyper-focused, hyper-targeted audience of people that were actually interested in buying my product before I'd turn on the Kickstarter Mm. or, or turn on the Indiegogo. And then what I would do is I would set a low goal that 
I knew I could control based on my audience that I had prepared. So when I would turn on my campaign, you know, I might only have like a twenty or fifty thousand dollar goal, but I'd be able to exceed that number immediately after launch, almost always within the first twenty four hours. Mm. And when that would happen, I would outperform the thousands of other live projects on Kickstarter, and my project would literally uh, jump to the top of the rankings, become a most popular project, a staff pick, a project they loved. And when that would happen, I would get this huge boost from their massive organic traffic. Mm. You know, they, at the time, they had you know tens of millions of people per month on that platform. And so if I had a $50,000 goal, within days, I'd be over 100000 or more. Wow. And sometimes would get over a million. So it was pretty powerful. And that's basically how I came up with the name Launch Boom, because it's exactly what I'm doing. It's what I call the Launch Boom Effect. Mm. It's where you spend about two to three months before a launch. You prepare a huge audience of people that actually want to buy the product. So in essence, I'm pre-selling the pre-sale on Kickstarter. Does that make sense? Got it. Got it. Got it. So that's amazing, man. And now we just, before we started recording, you had told me you have a team of about 25 employees. So I'm curious, how did Launchboom go from you being, you, you know, doing it all, being the the you know doing everything to now having such a large team what what was that process like yeah so right after i had sold my last company petbox um you know i did, i got petbox to just over 50,000 monthly subscribers and at the time um i was raising my series a round i was out there looking for 10 million dollars of investment capital and then i had an early exit um mm -hmm. a strategic partner came in and just bought the whole company it was awesome so as soon as that had happened in early 2015, um, I was already crowdfunding. Yeah. And so what I ended up doing, uh, just to kind of get there a lot faster, was I partnered with an incredible marketing agency in San Diego, California, called Label Creative. And basically what I did was I went in and started working on other crowdfunding projects with this small group of guys. At the time, it was a handful of these really, really smart college grads uh, that had come together shortly after they had graduated to build this marketing business where they were doing a lot of video production, a lot of web development. And what I did was I suggested that they s switch their focus and their entire business model and that this crowdfunding industry taking off. Mm. This is back in 2015 when it was about, um, you know, it was a $34 billion industry. And, you know, today, 2018, um, the industry is over 60 billion. And by wow. 2020, it's forecasted to be over 20 billion. So in 2015, these guys were like, Will, we love it. Let's do it. So I actually partnered with a marketing agency that already had equipment, already had, um, you know, a staff of about, you know, five full time people. And so from there, what we did was we managed about 15 launches in 2015. And all of those launches did 100,000 or more raised. Wow. So basically validated the beta. And then at that point, we basically just self-funded the entire business. So it's the first business that I've never raised outside capital for. And I basically self-funded this entire business um, by literally just bringing in great projects, helping entrepreneurs, and then basically learning as we grew. So to put it into perspective, 2016, we lost over 50 products. Okay. And that was that was a year where you know Indiegogo put us on their uh, you know expert page, uh, Kickstarter added us to their expert page, so that helped us drive a lot of new products, a lot of new business, and then from there we made some key hires in 2016 that allowed us to actually build a systematized process. So what's so cool about our system today is that we actually have our own platform. When okay. um, when we work with entrepreneurs and they come in. They have their own dashboard. Um, we have an open system where everything we're working on, they have eyes on. Wow. And the reason, we do, the reason we do it that way is because I'm an entrepreneur. I like to know what's going on. Mm. So, do my, so do my clients. And it actually allows them to understand their customers better. And we're learning so much. And this is before we even launched the product on Kickstarter. Right. It's cool. Wow, man. I mean, that's, that's such a cool story and it makes a lot of sense. I think it's a great strategy, you know, teaming up with the existing uh, guys, you know, that's, that's, that's really cool. So I know you've had a ton of campaigns. 
um, that have raised, you know, even over a million dollars, not just, you know, six figures, but seven figure campaigns. And I'm, I'm curious, what are some of these success stories that kind of stand out to you? What are some campaigns that you can see that, it, you know, that you remember fondly of like how you guys contributed and, and maybe what made those campaigns so special? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the reason I love launch boom is because it really is a full service crowdfunding agency. And mm -hmm. what that means is we're doing everything from figuring out the messaging, the positioning, we're helping people understand who their customers are very, very early. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, once we get that information and data, we leverage that data to go build the marketing assets. So this is where we build out the video scripts. We have our own production studio right here in San Diego, California. So this is where we create the Kickstarter video, but we're also creating a lot of extra B-rolls specific for digital marketing. And this is where we're cutting up those videos into little micro teaser ads. Mm -hmm. Those ads do so well, but ultimately what I'm getting at, Alex, is we're the key to our success. The core of our business is digital marketing. Mm -hmm. It really comes down to Facebook, Instagram advertising. So everything we're creating here internally it's more specific for the advertising purpose where we're trying to get all of our content to go viral because once that content goes viral, the return on the advertising spend, it literally goes through the roof. It's mm. incredible what can happen. So I start there because for me, what I look at is not who raised the most amount of money. That's not what gets me fired up. Yeah. It's whose advertising budget went the farthest. Mm. So, you know, a great example was, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I was working with um, just a bunch of young guys out of China. And these guys were like really ambitious, but they had a really cool product called Zero Breeze. It was a portable air conditioning unit. And basically what we would do with these guys is they had no capital whatsoever because they were so young. So these guys basically came over and they're like, hey, Will, we have a credit card, but we only have $11,000 limit on it. Mm. And, we, and we want to pump it all into digital ads, which is exactly what they should do. Yeah. And so we took that $11,000 ad budget and we turned it into over $1.3 million in sales. Using wow. our system. So, so that right there is probably one of my most memorable deals because we literally helped these young, you know, 20 something year old Chinese kids take their awesome idea and invention to market. And today those kids are millionaires. Wow. And so for me, I think what makes my job fun is, A, I'm an entrepreneur, so I get to work with all these really cool, uh, interesting entrepreneurs all over the world. You know, we've got clients in over 40 countries today. Um, and what's also cool about it is when you're able to take someone who's never launched a product before and actually help them become a millionaire. And since we started this company, um, we've helped over 20 people become multimillionaires, which wow. for me, Alex, it's so cool, man. Yeah, I can I can only imagine. That has to be just so exciting and just so fulfilling, you know, seeing, you know, not only have you brought your vision to life in so many ways, but you're also helping so many other people bring theirs to life. And uh, that, that's incredible, man. You can't put a price on that. That's awesome. So what do you think? I mean, this is a really broad question. So maybe if you want to, you know, hit one point that you think is really important about it, what, what would you say when you're looking at the future of crowdfunding? Or if I were to ask you, what's the future of crowdfunding? What would your answer be? Yeah. So the future of crowdfunding, I believe it's only just now getting started. Hmm. I mean, the truth is, my primary marketplaces where we like to play is Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Got it. They've only been around for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, they both opened their doors in 2009. They're not even a decade old yet. And already, I mean, they're billion dollar marketplaces. Right. So where I see crowdfunding going is I see it becoming even more user friendly for all of uh, not only those consumers out there looking for new innovative products at a discount, mm -hmm. but also for entrepreneurs being able to green light their products even earlier and understand what the actual demand is without taking you know too much financial risk whatsoever. So that's yeah. kind of high level, Alex, that's really where I see this going. Um, it's just, it's incredible how fast it's growing. And um, 
there's still so much more opportunity here. And, you know, part of what we're trying to do here at LaunchBoom is we're also trying to create a much better experience, uh, more for the entrepreneur and the business side, mm. because it is a lot of work. It is really hard. It's not, these projects aren't easy. And, you know, to do it right, and when I say right, to have a six or seven figure campaign, um, you, you really have to take that time. You know, I like to have three months prior to launch to yeah. really properly set these projects up and build out these audiences mm. and more importantly, engage the audiences so that we can get a really high, strong conversion once we actually do go live. Does yeah, that make sense? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I'm curious. I'm going to divert for one quick second, just based on something you just said. And maybe what when you say engage those audiences, can you just maybe explain what that looks like? Is it kind of like building up an email list or is it through social? Is it through all of the above? How are you engaging that audience before you launch on a, on a crowdfunding campaign? Alex, honestly, that's the best question because that is the most important aspect when it comes to crowdfunding and ensuring any project's success. Yeah. The way we're doing it today, we're much more advanced. We've mm. evolved a great deal, especially over like the last 24 months. Um, where we are today is the way the system works on our side is what we're doing is we are helping our any of our clients, right? we help them identify any potential audience that we believe to be their customer. Hmm. And then what we do is we take a ton of product images here in our production studio. And then what we're doing is we're building dozens and dozens of ad sets specific to Facebook and Instagram. And then what my web development teams do, they're building what we call lead funnels. Now, these lead funnels, it's just a very simple um, landing page. Mm. And the reason we build these is when someone clicks on an advertisement on Facebook, we then redirect that person over to this landing page that we built. Now, the landing page is going to showcase you know, a little bit more information about the project, but then we're going to have some kind of call to action, something simple like sign up, be the first to know when we launch on Kickstarter, receive a special discount for mm. helping us. Uh, launch our product on Kickstarter. Now that person's going to opt in and submit their email. Once they opt in, that's what I call a lead. That's the first thing we do with engaging anyone. Why? Because now we have permission to email market back to that person and convert them at a later time. Mm. Now, as soon as they opt in, we then pull them through a, a second funnel process that we call our reservation. Now what this is, is we're actually pre-selling the pre-sale on Kickstarter or the pre-sale on Indiegogo. And what I mean by that is what we tell the consumer is, hey, listen, we only have a limited number of units, maybe 500 units that are going to be at an even better discount. And you can guarantee that discount today by pulling out your credit card and placing a small deposit. Mm. So we set this up through Stripe and we collect those deposits and put those payments into our client's bank account. But the beauty of that is now we're building a funnel of leads, which will usually convert around 5% or more. And then we're also building a second funnel called our reservation funnel, which are actually acquisitions because people don't place deposits if they're not very serious about buying a product. Right. And obviously we get a much larger conversion on that funnel. Right. And, and so what we're doing is we're actually collecting the leads, the reservations, and we can actually understand very early, within about 30 days, the expected return for the client's advertising dollar. And what we do every single time, and this is the most important part about my process, Alex, which is why I'm diving a little deeper into it. But the beauty of my system is every project we touch, we run it through a 30-day test pilot first to validate that my system is the best system to support the outcome where we know our client's going to make a profit. Right. Because if we're not confident that their product will perform well using our system, we're not going to take it into a full program because that's where we apply much larger ad budgets. Mm. So is we're validating that we can get a 300% or greater return using our system on the ad spend. What that looks like, Alex, is like you put a dollar into my ad machine, we're able to 
generate three dollars or more in sales. Right. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. So once we are build those funnels, we then have an email marketing sequence where we go back to everyone. We give them updates. Um, we create excitement through different uh, sequences we've created. And then when we turn on these campaigns, we get a huge conversion. Hmm. And it usually happens within hours after launch, which is that launch boom effect, where right. we set a goal that we control based on our data. So everything we do here, it's all um, based around our predictive analytics machine. So we don't guess anymore. Today, right. we actually know how to control the outcome for the client. So everyone's successful. And you know, I'd say over the last you know, 18 months or so, we've had 100% success rate since we implemented this new testing system before we go into a full program launch. Yeah, man, that's incredible. And you guys are, you know, one of, if not the best of this. And so I, I appreciate you giving us the process. I think it helps for, you know, us, anyone considering, you know, doing a campaign understand, but it also is, it's just proof that, you know, your guys' system works. So that's really, really cool to know, to know what you guys are doing. Um, I'm also curious about maybe and we don't have to spend a lot of time here, but your thoughts on the differences between going with an Indiegogo versus a Kickstarter, like how do you, you guys decide, are you primarily on Kickstarter? Is it uh, case by case? Do you decide which platform is best for the, for the campaign at hand? How do you guys choose between an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter? Alex, another great question. So had this been a year ago, I would say always launch on Kickstarter first. And then when Kickstarter ends, you know, after like a 45 or 60 day campaign, then roll immediately behind it Indiegogo in demand. So you can actually launch on both platforms. Okay. And the, the reason I would say that a year ago is because Kickstarter has an audience, which is, you know, three to four times larger than Indiegogo's audience. Hmm. So it's like launch on the bigger platform first and then roll over to Indiegogo in demand. And this way you can leverage both audiences. You can sell longer and have a much bigger outcome. Right. That was my that was my general um, way I would explain that to any of my clients a year ago. Mm. Um, today, I've got a very very different view. Um, again, the space has continued to evolve, and what I mean by that is, although Kickstarter still has a larger audience compared to Indiegogo, based on my last um, research, which I did over the summertime, um, Kickstarter has a, over forty million unique monthly visitors on their platform okay. versus Indiegogo, which has about 15 million monthly um, unique visitors on theirs. Okay. Um, but believe it or not, I've actually many more came in 2018 with Indiegogo versus Kickstarter. Wow. And, the, and the main reason why Alex is because Indiegogo is much more hardware focused. Um, Everything we do here at LaunchBoom for the majority is consumer hardware, mm. right? Um, Kickstarter also uh, several years ago filed as a B corporation, which means that they get huge tax incentives to support socially minded projects. Mm. So what's happened, um, especially over like the last, I want to say 18, 24 months is they've shifted their whole direction where they're really more interested in um, supporting socially minded projects. Hmm. So the best way to explain it for me is if a client comes to me and they've got an awesome product and it's also supporting a valuable social good, then I usually direct them over to Kickstarter. Right. And, and everybody else, I direct them directly over to Indiegogo. The reason I do this is Indiegogo is doing an incredible job with their support outreach team, where what they're doing is they're helping get involved and, and they're helping support my clients pre-launch before we go live. And they'll also um, help promote our projects in their newsletters. They'll help us get better placement on their platform longer, which gives us access to more organic, more free traffic to help us generate a much larger outcome. Got so it. I tell you this, Alex, because... This year, we've launched more million-dollar campaign on Indiegogo than we have in the history of our entire business since we wow. opened doors in early 2015. Wow, that so, is that's interesting. Yeah, so Alex, I'm 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 loving on Indiegogo right now. They're they're really 
treating our clients well, and they're also delivering, which is really important. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. I, and I only have a couple more questions for you, but I'm curious. I often like to put uh, kind of a spotlight on maybe the, you know, the 18 to 25 year old who's maybe considering launching he or she's, uh, you know, crowdfunding campaign and maybe some tips that you'd give them. But for you, I want to ask kind of a different question um, because you guys have seen such immense success over your campaigns. I'm curious, would you give different advice to someone who's trying to raise fifty thousand dollars to someone who's trying to raise one million dollars on their campaign would you give different advice to those two types of campaigns or is the same general principles for both what would you say to those yeah i mean all right so to keep the answer simple the only difference between a fifty thousand dollar campaign and a million dollar campaign based on all the experience we have, which Alex, we've launched more crowdfunding campaigns than any other agency in the world. We really mm-hmm. have. And we're at the point now where the only difference between the $50,000 campaign and the million dollar campaign really comes down to having access to a larger advertising budget mm-hmm. that, more, that more importantly performs better. It's that right. simple. So to back up two steps, the reason I'm doing all these test pilots with every project that we've been managing over the last 18 months is because it gives me the time to understand whether or not my system can generate a profitable outcome. And once I have the data that supports that, only then do we help our clients generate the extra funding that they actually need. Because sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. Hmm. So we have our own credit facility that will back any of our projects that pass the test pilot because they know that our system works. Mm. So we can actually help that 18 year old or 25 year old that might be launching their first project secure a larger amount of capital uh, to, to generate that million dollar campaign. Yeah. Now, now, Alex, what I haven't talked about is what if that test pilot doesn't perform well? Mm. What, what I did back in 2016, my team built a program called Launch Boom Academy which is basically everything we do as an agency for our clients, but we broke it down into a step-by-step video tutorial uh, that you know allows people to launch their own projects using our same system, using all of our tools, our dashboards. Yeah. And, um, and the reason I did that was a lot of early stage companies don't have large budgets. You know, everyone, you know, my, I'm, I'm guilty of this too. They like to shoe strap because the longer you can sh- shoe strap your and support it yourself, you can generate more value. And then when you are ready to raise more money, you can raise a lot more money and give away a lot less of your business. Right. 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 So um, I, I tell you that because anyone who goes through the test and if the test doesn't perform, well, I've already done about 80% of the work that they need to actually go launch on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And then what I do is I give them a free license to launch boom Academy so that they can launch themselves. And then in this way, um, whatever, ad budgets they have access to. It doesn't matter what they have access to, but they can manage it themselves. But what it tells me is that their project probably will only raise about 50000 or so. Right? So for, for some people, that's still important. That still helps them get to the next level. And so that's why we built that tool. And we also offer that tool um, to anyone else that, you know, may be interested in learning how to do it themselves uh, so they don't have to, you know, you know spend and extra money on an agency to do it before them. Yeah, no, that's super valuable. And I think a lot, even if you're just curious, I think that's an incredible resource for people to, to look through. Like, what does a process look like from A to Z? You know, I think that's a, a great a great thing you guys are offering. So that, that kind of wraps up our interview. I mean, where can people connect with you online? Where would you like people to, to see more of what you guys are up to? I mean, we have a ton of information at launchboom.com. Um, launchboom.com, you can check out all sorts of campaigns that we've managed. Um, you can also, more importantly, check out the blog section. Um, every single person on my team um, contributes to our blog post. And there's just a ton of information in there. Um, that, And we've always been publishing ever since we opened our doors. So there's just a lot of great content there. 
And then if you are interested in learning more or talking to anyone on my team, there's also an apply now page where you can just put some more information about your project and you can schedule a call with uh, people on our team to learn more about potentially working together if that's an interest you know anyone may have. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being on, man. I, I really feel like we kind of open the, or you rather, I feel like you kind of opened the hood and showed us a lot of what's kind of going on underneath the surface of what makes a really successful campaign. And I think what you said in the very, very beginning about like, you know, why you fell in love with crowdfunding, that it's, that it's easy to get into and it's easy to see why it's, uh, it's, it's a kind of a no brainer these days to use crowdfunding. It's also extremely complex and you're an expert at it. Um, and what you guys are doing at launch boom is just, you know, helping people so much you know, achieving their dreams and their goals, their products and campaigns. So I just appreciate you sharing and being open on the show. And we're just so excited to share this with our audience, man. Yeah, Alex, again, thank you so much for having me on the show. And it's been a pleasure getting to know you better as well. And um, I hope we can do it again sometime. This was fun. That was my interview with Will Ford. Man, he is such an expert and it was awesome for him to be so generous with his knowledge and their process and everything they're doing at Launch Boom. So you guys, make sure to go check out what they're doing and connect with them if you're trying to get help with your next campaign. Thank you so much for being on this week, Will. This podcast is made by GadgetFlow, and we're proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So make sure to check out our site for new products that we're curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another new episode, so in the meantime, please go rate and review our show on iTunes. Until next time, thank you so much for listening to the GadgetFlow podcast. Podcast.